All right, everybody, welcome back. My name is Pale L. Poppy. We're on episode 49. Got the chosen one here. Uh, it's episode 49 of Toxic Podcast. But Tyler just dropped a Redux album for his last album that came out. Uh, did it come out last year or did it came out two years ago? I think it came out last year. Yeah, his album, um, uh, Call Me If You Get Lost. Mm-hmm. Fire. He dropped bangers. Yeah, dro- it was only like seven tracks, right? It was only like yeah, six, it was like or, seven seven, six or seven new tracks. Six or seven new tracks. I thought it was going to be an entire new album. That's what I was waiting for. I thought it was an entire new album. I know he called it uh, Call Me If You Get Lost, the estate sale. The estate but sale. But for some reason, I thought it was going to be like an extension of his last project. But I think these were just like Lucy's that he didn't even get to finish or something like that. Right. He, yeah, he probably didn't finish them. He didn't finish them, and a lot of them didn't really fit the album. Like, if you really, if you really think about it, a lot of those songs did not fit the album. Like, uh, "Dog Tooth." So, "Dog Tooth." That album, direct quotes from the song. He said, direct quotes from the lyrics of the song. He said, "She can rob my face. I don't want nothing in return." People were calling him a munch for that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> At least people Anthony Fantano was. Him a munch. <laughs> He's basically the whole song was just like you can. I just want somebody who's just like I can love on you. I don't really need much in return. I just need your love. I just need you to, you know, I just kind of need you. I'm, no, we don't have to get super deep, but call me if you get lost is much more of a like drawn out date, like meet up at a date. Like, hey, call me, you know, come, we're going to meet up. I'm going to take you out. We're going to do real nice things. Like, And it was more of a rap album too. I think he actually specified that he wanted to do more rapping on it. The, the tracks that he released, some of them, a lot of them were like more like sing songy type. Yeah, they felt very much more like a Flower Boy. Like I got, flower a, boy, I got yeah. a big Flower Boy vibes from the songs he released. He also released a song called uh, Wharf Talk, which was very Flower Boy. It was all mel- melodic and singing and like, hey, you know, like, come, let's go on a picnic. We don't need to do all that chattering. Let the My wharf talk. My favorite first date, you know, picnics. Let, let the wharf talk. Where you know they're they're just out of this wharf on a date. Me and Tyler um, would have a great first date because we right we right there. We right the same, there. Same kind of vibe. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> he be up in like Europe and shit nowadays. He's living a different type he of lifestyle now. He's living a different. Now. Kind of he living a different nigga now. came he, up. He came, came up. up. He like he he looked like he like out in Portugal somewhere, like out in the country. And, in Portugal, just kicking it, you know. Like. He, I mean, he's such a multi talented guy now. He's he has his hands in so many different things. He's making a shit ton of money nowadays, bro. Yes, so he is. He, he's affording. He's affording to be able to do a lot of different types of shit. Um, Proud of him. Another song he released was called. Um, what was that song called? It was called uh, "Sorry Not Sorry." I think I might play that for my deep cut today. Great song. And I the might music video. I, I, I don't blame you. I, I want to play. I mean, I'm gonna play in something different, but I kind of want to do Dog Tooth. I kind of want this to be a Tyler centric little thing. Dog Tooth is my favorite song. Yeah, but Sorry Not Sorry was another song where, in the music video, he it, you saw every era of Tyler. He dressed up as like because every album, every Tyler album, he's like a different. He's in a different era of his life, and he's like a different character. Right. Like Flower Boy, he was coming out. It was more sentimental. He's holding flowers. There's the bees around. He's like wearing a white tee and he's holding these, he's holding flowers. And it's kind of more like he's, you know, he was coming out to the world about his sexuality, you know, and like, like, oh, what's the album? Cherry Bomb. He's like wearing this like blue mask and he looks like mm-hmm. real crazy. You know, Igor, he's wearing like that suit and he has like that, that pink, I'm sorry, that blonde wig on that like bold cut. That was the theme. The yeah. That was that, the theme. That's when he pulled out the themology of it. Mm-hmm. That album yeah. was great. So you saw every era of Tyler, and you just see like this shirtless, homeless-looking dude that we don't, we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the video, he ends up killing all of them, and he just looks like this, like this crazy, like murderer who just is like, "I'm killing all of them, and this is my rawest, truest self." But like, I thought that I thought that, that was song beautiful. was so brilliant, personally, because of the actual feelings that he provided. I mean, when you're an artist, that's the only thing that your job is to do is just to provide feeling, mm-hmm. make the audience just feel what you're trying to say. Or explain a story that most people can relate to. And in that album, he was speaking more so about, or in that song, excuse me, he was speaking more so from his own point of view. But the way he was able to break it down in terms of saying like all these different things about like how, like I know a lot of the stuff he's ever, he's mentioned in uh, his his podcast and his interviews has been alongside the, long, the lines of like being a black man or, or being just a black person in America, how we're always supposed to be like quote unquote activists and stuff like that and fighting for black people and stuff. But he has one of the lines, I don't know the line specifically, but he has one of those lines where he's talking about how like the the chains that he's wearing is bigger than the plight of black people. It's just an interesting like dynamic take. Did you recognize that part? You know, you I know did hear about? that part and I, I don't know why. I, I, I heard it and I just didn't know. I was still a little confused about it. It's like, what, what does he mean by... Can you explain that a little bit more? What, what your I take was? I think he's was? just talking about living about life. Because a lot of people, you know, when you're of a, a certain caliber, especially as a black person, because we have so many inequalities in the country, 
there's like a type of um, responsibility that everybody puts onto people's shoulders as a celebrity to have, since they have such a big platform and have such a big voice, that they're supposed to be using that platform in order to speak about things that most people, like activists speak about. And he's saying like, well, I'm just an artist. Like number one, I'm just a human being. And number number two, I'm just an artist. Like I make music. Right. So and he doesn't want to feel boxed in and feel like he has to do that all the time. Like he's and not he's a speaking to that activist. criticism. So I, I, I get it from that perspective, but I'm also like, I feel like I hope he doesn't feel like just because he has a lot of money, he is just completely insulated from racism. Like he's, no, in, he's not doing classism that. wise. He's good. But, you know, there are plenty of rich black people who still have to deal with racism. So I, I'm trying to find because on Call Me If You Get Lost on the actual on the first album that he released, he actually has a song. It might be Massa. It might be Massa where he's talking about he alludes to that same thing on that track. Maybe that's why he left this one off is because he was already speaking about it. But he's he said that before, like especially on his interviews. He talks about that. Like how you were saying, he, he's just about like living life right now. He's just about having fun and living life. Yeah, right he's now. like, yo, I'm I'm out here living. Y'all on the feed. That's what he said yeah. on uh on Dog Two. But he's I mean, such he's a like what thirty three, thirty like four. He's a young dude. He's a young guy. But I'm also like, I feel like Tyler's always like the energy he's at now. Like he will evolve. Like you never stop growing. But that useful energy at his core, like that, like that, oh, that young Tyler. Like he was a goofball in Odd Future. I don't think that will ever truly leave him. He has such a young spirit. I don't. I think he can be an eighty-year-old man. Like I saw someone on a comment today. I forget what I was reading, but he was like, "You know, as I'm getting older, I'm forty. I'm just now getting started." He says, "I want to die a young man in an old man's body." I think that fits Tyler completely. Yeah, like Tyler will always be a young man at heart. He's still young now, but I'm just, he has he has an energy that inner child in him, but it's like becoming more refined. But it's still there. The inner I think child that's is why still there. People are so inspired by him, mm-hmm. so motivated by him. Even the way he just speaks, like I lot, I listen to a lot of his interviews. That's why I keep referencing them. And the way that he talks, like you could tell that all he really thinks about is just living in the moment. And that's what he talks about in his music too. It's just being your true self, being your authentic self, and just living in the moment. Like there's really no that whole boxing in thing. We try to do that. At least the internet nowadays tries to do that with almost every single individual. Where because you fit this type of look, or because you fit this type of uh, you, you identify as this. That means that you need to have this, that, and the third. You need to be acting in this type of way. And he's exactly. just like, fuck that. You reach a certain age, you need to be doing these kind of things. He said, I'm just out here living. Y'all on the feed, listening to BS, listening to ridiculous takes about who you are, who you need to be, what you need to be doing. I'm out here living. But couldn't you what make was the-, the song where he was saying that he was a munch? Uh, dog Tooth. That's the same. That's the same song. He was like, "I'm out here." Because we were talking about that. We were talking about that. <laughs> yeah, everybody's calling him a munch because on the intro, the first like line on that song is, "She can rob my face. I don't want nothing in return." That hook is gnarly. Which is a munch, or technically, if you, like the definition of what a munch What's is. What's wrong with being a munch, though? Why are people clowning him for that? I haven't seen that many people clowning him. I, I need but why some. Are people I, need, I, for that? I need some give and take. If you want me to give you head, and you don't want to give me head. I'm getting used. I'm getting used for the, the but tongue But that's what skills. he would say. He don't need nothing in return. He gets off on just on being a munch. Um, he also so he said, getting something. He also said on that song, when he said that men are always like body shaming women or telling women how their body's supposed to be. Yeah. But they'll never take advice from a nigga with a lean gut. Uh-huh. So basically saying like fat dudes are always talking about women are, need to do this X, Y, Z with their bodies. But when a, when a dude in shape is trying to tell them, maybe you should get in shape too. They, they ignore it. Like he was, just, it was a whimsical, fun song. But he was like, he was talking a little bit. I saw people he was in the comments. A bit. I saw a lot of women in the comments were saying, "I really appreciate Tyler's comments." Or I, they were like, oh, "I didn't know Tyler was was like that." I thought, you know, they still thinking about uh, pre pre was it Wolf or pre Wolf Tyler? I honestly don't really listen golf, to much whatever Tyler. Was called. I haven't. I didn't really get into Tyler until Flower Boy. Yeah, I didn't get into Tyler until Flower Boy. I knew about him though. Like I heard some of his antics and his like crazy, his crazy lines like pre Flower Boy. But I didn't get into Tyler until I was just. Chilling, listening to Flower Boy with some homies when I was like 2017, and I was like, "Damn, who is this?" I was like, "Damn, yeah. this." Because that's key. when he started making music, and mm-hmm. he says that too. That that's when he started paying attention to the melodies and the chord progressions and the the harmonies. You start noticing the harmonies, start singing a little bit more. That's when he started. He started to turn up in that album, mm-hmm. personally to me. We got uh, some more music that's coming out though. Um, we did mention Chloe Bailey. Mm-hmm. You didn't listen to the Chloe Bailey album though. I didn't listen to it. Yeah, I didn't even know she dropped the album, honestly. 
I was waiting for it because a lot of people were getting up her ass mm-hmm. for having that Chris Brown single. And when I listened to the album, I mean, it was good music. It was good music. Like, I'm not going to say, I don't have anything bad to say about the album or anything like that. But if I'm being honest, the best song on the album was the Chris Brown track. That's why she mm-hmm. released it as the fucking single. I like, think, yeah. I don't know why people got up her ass about that. Because, you know, we talked about this already, but like, people don't like Chris Brown for reasons that is obvious to everybody. But is the listening. music good, though? Is the music good? Is the song good? Yes. I'm not, comparing, I'm not comparing Chris Brown to R. Kelly, but it's, isn't that the same kind of logic to a certain degree? No, I, I mean, we, we know that. And that's why you said we covered that part already. I'm not talking yeah. about the actual, like, what the, the, the repercussions should be for Chris Brown. I'm just talking about the music. Because if we just go and go and listen to the music, and I don't really always align with the separate the art from the artist type of thing. I don't really like that narrative. But if we're talking about the music and we're just reviewing the music, the music was good. The song was good. The only other song that's on that project that's even like a, a semblance, and I see that, that that's blowing up on iTunes at least, is the one with Future. But I don't really, I mean, mm. it, it was okay. It was okay. The album in general was all right, but um, we wanted to get to Meg The Stallion because she's outside now. She's outside. Yeah, she's, she's, she's made a return, you know, since all the, the whole Tory Lanez fiasco. The rollout it, has begun. She did that, that opening pitch of the baseball game. Do you remember yeah. what, what game, who was playing? I just know. The Astros. I think it was Houston Astros. Astros. Yeah, it was cool, man. I, 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 I'm happy she's back. I'm happy, you know, she's ready to move on with her life and her career. And you know, I'm, I'm excited to see her on and go into TV realm. I like seeing her on She Hulk. And I think, I think she has a lot of potential to do do big things in the TV realm. Yeah, we were talking about that, like the transition of Meg The Stallion coming from you know being this huge music mogul type individual, and people thought that was obviously the route that she was going to take. But her albums, at least the sales, started to kind of diminish as she got further and further away from that, uh, from some of those bigger songs. And now it seems like she's going to take the trajectory of trying to do that kind of like, I'm a musician, but I'm also an actor. Because we've seen that be- done before. I mean, Lady Billie Gaga Eilish. is the one that's doing it the most. Yeah, Billie Eilish, we saw her in Swarm. She, she She's doing ass that. on that show. And, and artists have been mm-hmm. doing that for the longest time. Like, look at Elvis. Like, Elvis is probably the first one to do that, right? Where he's like a huge music star and then transitions, and then transitions into, into movies. movies. He wasn't that successful at it, but because but there's a standard for it and there's a lane for it, so she's definitely going to take that route. But she does say that she did say that there's a new album that she's going to release, so that's coming out. That's the rollout good. has begun. The rollout has begun. The anime, she's going to be starring in the anime. That too, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot one, about one, that. Part. One of the creators of the Boondocks, one of the people who worked on the Boondocks. Is that even like? Because I know that was like a more so like a rumor. But there's rumors all over the place about making a lot of rumors. A lot of rumors. A lot of rumors come true, like more than you believe. Especially like when you look at what do you think that's gonna be like? An anime with Meg the Stallion and the Boondocks creator? It's probably. I really believe it's gonna be like think like RDC World mixed with like an anime plus Meg the Stallion. I think it's gonna be like that. Like you think she's gonna be acting? With a little Boondocks, she's gonna be voice acting. I really believe she's gonna be voice acting. I believe it's gonna be animated and she's gonna voice act. Sounds like an April Fool's joke. <laughs> it's probably just gonna be like a blurred, like a blurred anime. Like I'm trying to think of an example of like a blurred anime. Like, well, of course, a blurred anime is like the Boondocks is like one of the biggest examples of a blurred anime. You know what I mean by blurred? Like black nerd. No, black nerd anime. Oh, I've never heard that term. Uh, what is have, it? Blurred. There's like a blurred. There's, like, there's a blurred. Term. There's a blurred convention. It's called BlurredCon. I, I actually want to look it up. I've heard of it. But yeah, there's a black anime convention called BlurredCon. It's in uh, Virginia. Three day multi genre conference held in uh, Arlington, Virginia. Interesting. We might have to attend. Mm-hmm. This year it's going to be in July. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's a there's a big market. You know, anime is getting really big right now, especially among it's a lot huge. of black people. I mean, it's always been kind of big amongst black people. Like, you'd be hard pressed to find dude, black dudes who don't like DBZ. I firmly believe that. Even dude, and they don't even they're not even really in in, in anime. But you know. I don't want to get too I've been deep into this. Is. I've been trying to dabble in it, you know, because it's more of like a animation has this style where people tend to think this just for kids. I don't know if anime is the same thing. I think anime is more so looked yeah. at for nerds. I, I don't know if people just associate some people with kids. used to. Some people do, but like you can't. We could, we don't. We can't exist in a world with Attack on Titan. You still talking about animes for kids? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I, you kind of can. You kind of can. That's what people do. I don't know because they're uneducated. They don't. All they, only thing they know about anime is Pokemon, which is literally for children. Yeah. Maybe that's why. Because the, the bigger shows are, like, associated with kids. Probably. But, like, even Naruto, which 
is for a younger audience. Still, it's like, I'd say, TV 14, in my opinion. There are elements of it where kids can get I started to watch my fair share, and I watched the more mature anime. And I can tell you it's not for kids. But at the same time, like I think it's just that animation style. It's not just anime either. It's just any type of animation. But I think that that show should be... I, I, I see something coming from that show. And I see something coming from Meg the Stallion. Do you think, like, because I had this conversation with people off mic, like, do you think that there's anybody who has transitioned or can transition as well as Lady Gaga has? Because she's getting Oscars, bro. She's getting nominated year after year after year. I think she Billie might be the potential. best, like, Billie Eilish, you said? Yeah, Billie Eilish. I think she has potential. How many things has she acted in? I've only seen her in one thing. I have no idea. I think, I think this might have been her, her ba- debut. I've only seen her in one thing. She did all right. I mean, I don't really like the show that much, but she did all right. You know what I mean? But I mean, in terms of, I can't really think of anybody else who is a current musician who is at the top of that field and who can also act at the top of that class. I can't really think of anybody. You think Meg Thee Stallion has that potential? I don't know. I think it's too early. Yeah, she's been in. Yeah, this is her debut, bro. I just looked it up. That, that, that Swarm was her debut. Yeah, That's what I thought. I don't think I think if anybody has it uh, that I've seen right now, I think it's Billy. I really believe she killed, she bodied that fucking role on Swarm. What do you see her like playing like a like cult dramatic leader. roles? Dramatic roles. She was playing like a cult leader on. Uh, I think you have to be pretty decent to play a cult leader, even if it was just for an episode. She played like a really crazy gaslighting cult leader. I feel like, and she bodied that role. I feel like if you can do that, you can really do. You can do a lot. I know we haven't yeah. seen we haven't seen a full range. Maybe she could be in a comedy, but I feel like if she just continued to play this role of like a gaslighting villain kind of character, I feel like she would she could have a career and do pretty well doing that. Be interesting to see. Uh, what else we got? Let's transition. Let's transition. So let's move into Jonathan Majors. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah, when yeah, we yeah. when we talked about it previously, I mean it was fresh off Twitter, and we even prefaced. This is just, we're just reading what the media says and we're just kind of giving our rough take, understanding that we don't know the full story and the media plays games. And we talked about it last week, yeah. And we talked about it last week, but now we've, more information has come out. So, right. uh, you know, his girlfriend, she redacted her statements, her prior statements about what happened with According the to the story. lawyer. According to the lawyer, what happened with the situation. And also text messages leaked between her and Jonathan Majors regarding you know what went down and how the media is handling and i'll and i'll read i'll read i want to read them right now so there are two text messages from his girlfriend so the first one the first text message says that please let me know you're okay when you get this they assured me that you won't be charged they said they had to arrest you as protocol when they saw the injuries on me and and they knew we had a fight i'm so angry they did that and i'm sorry you're in this position um I will make sure nothing happens about this. I told them it was my fault for trying to grab your phone. I only just got out of the hospital. Just call me when you're out. I love you. Then a couple hours later, she said, they called me again to check on me, and I reiterated how this was not an attack, and they do not have my blessing on any charges being placed. I read the paper they gave me about strangulation, and I said, point blank, this did not occur and should be removed immediately. The judge is definitely going to be told this. She ensured this to me. I know you. I know you have the best team. There's nothing to worry about, and I, and I just want you to know that I'm doing all I can on my end. I also said to tell the judge to know that the origin of the call was to do with me collapsing and passing out, and your worry as my partner due to our communication prior. Out of care, she promised all will be relayed. And um, I think there was something else we forgot to mention. Jonathan Majors actually was the one who called the police initially. It wasn't her right. who called the police. Right, right, right. So this is this is what we have so far. What are your thoughts? I have my thoughts, but what are your thoughts well, on all, them. all this information? Give them. I don't know what happened. We still don't have the full story. We don't know. This is all speculation. We can, we can continue to speculate because I've seen people on Twitter like, well, he probably paid her. Or he's probably intimidating her to do all this. That could be a possibility. Yeah. Or on the opposite end of the spectrum, he, she could have caught him cheating. She could have attacked him. He's trying to defend himself. He called the cops to try to de-escalate the situation. And she... she Made it seem like he he was the one who instigated the entire thing, and was attacking her initially, and he got in trouble. Yeah. So there's so many different ways this could have went down. I'm of the opinion she probably thought he was texting another girl. I mean, the man's at the top of his career. You don't know what he could be doing. Right. Right. 
Could have been texting another girl. She could have grabbed his phone. She could have attacked him. He could have, he probably he was defending himself. I don't know though. I'm not taking a side, but I think there's a possibility there that it was she could have been a, she could have attacked him first. He could have defended himself or tried to or maybe he went too far in defending himself and then he became attacking her. And it, that's how it went down. Yeah, I mean, I'm still going to stand on what I said last week. I mean, nobody knows anything for fact except for the two people that were involved and I guess any other witnesses or that were involved. The only thing that I can say that we know for a fact is that historically, men normally, they did, they did this shit. So that's what I said last week, and I'm going to reiterate it again this week. Historically, men are the ones that perpetrate these crimes. And historically, when the woman is deemed to be like, oh, it may be up in the air that the woman might be lying or that she may be, even if, they, even if she does redact her statement. We have seen time and time again, we talked about Gervonta Davis months ago, same type of situation. Domestic violence incident, police show up, a uh, woman makes accusation of domestic violence, uh, and then days later says, oh, actually, didn't happen. But you have the scars, but you have the bruises to prove it. And not only that, but then there's a history of this happening to you in the same exact mm -hmm. way. So with Jonathan Majors, there's not necessarily a history. I mean, if you want to bring up some of those rumors that were circulating about people that he worked with in his past life, people that he went to school with, people that he's been on set with. People were coming out and saying like, this is something that I have seen Jonathan Majors uh, behaves as such, as behaving as an abuser. So if you want to bring those up, we can. It's a little, it's a little he say, she say. It's a little gossipy. It's a little chatty Cathy. But there is some type of history behind the fact that these men normally are the ones that are doing this type of shit. So I'm just gonna, I'm going to stand with the woman on this. I still stand with the woman okay. on this. Yes, early. I, 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 I'm just trying to think that this probably. I'm not denying that it's very possible that he had definitely abused her, but I, don't, I, I firmly believe that he didn't instigate the situation at all. Now, what he did after that, what he did when she grabbed his phone and was doing whatever, whatever to him, I couldn't tell you. Very possible that he could have abused her, and then she maybe feels like she was at fault because she started it. But it doesn't excuse if he was legitimately abusing her after that and not just defending himself. I can't defend that, and he needs to he needs to face punishment for that. Yeah, but my whole problem I, with the situation my, my is just that I, I just don't like the fact because I know people want to get on the people that say like, "Oh, you're not giving people enough space for it to go to trial. You're not. Uh, it, it's proven. It's it's innocent until proven guilty. I understand all that type of stuff, right? There's a lot of uh, information that we don't have as just like the audience, as the viewer, because we weren't there. But at the same time, like I said, there is too much history and I can run down a whole list of people more than just Dravante Davis of situations in which people come up with all types of justifications as to, as to the reason why the man could be put in a compromising position. You mentioned last week, like there's a, there's a history of black men in certain situations and certain relationships that get um, certain allegations that aren't truthful. We know all this, but we also know, and I think that's the biggest thing to mention is that most of the time even if the person doesn't come out or even if the person does redact the statement the shit ends up being true so i really don't think there's any wiggle room in it. i don't even want to care about the justifications or the the possibilities or anything like that i don't know if that's i don't know if that's controversial to say but that's just where i stand okay and that's very fair and so we get more information we're we're just speculating but i definitely think i think he i think ultimately i think he's gonna be fine uh, i think i think the way that things are turning out right now, I think his career is going to be Not fine. if he goes to jail. <laughs> I doubt, Not if he takes his ass to jail. I, I doubt he'll go to jail. But that's just my opinion right now. What happened with the bond situation and stuff like that? They never saw. I never saw any reporting on that type of stuff. Because he got arrested. Yes, he got arrested. And he's definitely out. There's no way he's still sitting in jail. Oh, I don't think maybe it wasn't that important for people to report on. Like, there's, He's not in jail. We know he got out. Like He, he definitely bonded out. If, you know. But you know that's that's really that's really it when it comes to Jonathan Majors. I think I think definitely it should be interesting to see. But I think he's gonna be fine. It's yeah. just kind of sad to see watch his career shoot straight up. It's like a, he it's called like the a, police on himself. It's like a meme. <laughs> yeah, I know it's like a meme. Stock. He called it's the just, police on himself. Crypto. He just shot up and just went straight down. I think that shit is so funny because people are using that as the justification. I don't want to hold this too long, but people are using that as a justification as the reason why he didn't, he would be innocent in this situation because he called the police on himself. Men tell on themselves all the time in these situations. All the time in these situations. I mentioned off mic how the Cheryl Lee Ralph situation happened. The woman from Abbott Elementary. Yes. She was on a podcast, just casually mentioned it. I mean, not casually because it's not a casual situation, but she mentioned that 
there was a specific type of person in the industry that sexually assaulted her, sexually harassed her, harassed her. The dude that wasn't even mentioned by Didn't name, even mention him by name, came out and was like, "I did not do this. I'm going to sue you for defamation." Taught, he told on himself. So she can, she can, she has him dead to rise now. Has even him. if she didn't, even if she didn't even care about pressing charges, because she didn't even come out and say it. That's what I'm saying. Like in all these types of situations, there's too many situations in which the woman is always looked at as having all these types of. Uh, it, it could be lies. It could be uh, a figment of his of her imagination. It could be delusions. All this type of stuff. And time after time, in the t- uh, again, these men come out and they expose themselves, or they get exposed. Tory Lanes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Told on himself, and is still trying to say I didn't do it. And call, I, he and told now, on now himself. He, he appealed again after telling on himself, and the call got released. It happens time and time again. There's just no room for justification here, bro. To me, he gonna have to prove himself innocent in order to be innocent. It's not innocent before guilt. It's proven. You need to be proven innocent. If you're gonna say you need to be proven guilty, you need to be proven innocent too, right? Well, you get the benefit of the doubt until there's definitive ev- evidence that a court has judged you. As a man, you which do. I think is fine. I, I, we know. I, I believe, there's nothing wrong with that. There are pl- and, I'm a, and a lot of times people actually do these crimes, but there are, pl- there are and black men lead the majority, in, high majority of the time. Black men lead in a number of, of being wrong, wrongfully co- convicted and late, and you know, and later released from prison after decades for crimes they didn't commit. Constantly, yes. it, ha- it happens. I'm, I'm just saying it happens constantly. So I don't. I don't Not I for don't, domestic violence, though. Correct me if I'm wrong, but not for domestic violence. I don't. I, yeah, I agree that I don't believe that it's for domestic violence for other things. But that, I mean, that my, my point. You know, my point in saying that is I don't. I don't see a problem because a lot of times black well, black men technically get that right. It's you know on paper, but we don't normally get that right. We're not. A lot of times we get railroaded and shipped up the road, and there's no actual evidence of the crimes that they're saying that we committed being committed. So we didn't get we didn't get that benefit of the doubt innocent and proven guilty. He said, "Well, you're a Negro, so we're going to just why the we're going to throw this bullshit at you so and send you to jail." That's why the context of this situation is so important because it's domestic violence. There are strangulation scars on the woman. Who did she did it to herself? She did it to herself. Like that's what I'm trying to say. But what do you think the text? What what and what is what was the text message? You think this they was, do that shit all the time? I just mentioned the Javante. I know it's like anecdotal. Sure, we could say all this type of stuff. But this stuff happens all the time. Donald Trump is about to go to jail right now. Who is in the same situation of paying somebody to keep their mouth shut? You don't think that a woman who was actually like assaulted would do the same? It I just think would. that it's. I, I just think it's the same. I think it's the same shit. I think it speaks for itself. I really think it's open and shut case. Okay. Yeah. I, I, you don't have to agree. I you just think ultimately we got to wait and see. You know, of course, I of think course. I think if he's meant to get exposed for that, it will get exposed. But yeah, of course, I'm keeping an open mind that in my opinion is more likely she caught him cheating. She started smacking him up. Right. He starts smacking her up. Then he's like, oh, shit, I went too far. And he called the cops. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to let's have some fun. Let's have some fun because we, we serious it out. Now, let's let's make it a little jokey joke. There was a something going around on Twitter of some woman who was out and she said that she went on two dates, two first dates in 24 hours. And people, obviously, this is all going to be men, ran amok, ran amok mm-hmm. in them comments. This is how women use us, y'all. Mm-hmm. This is what women do. My question is, is it wrong for a woman to go on, for anyone, but is it wrong for a woman to go on two dates in 24 hours? No, because people are speed date. I don't see, I guess they're they're thinking, Oh well, she's using these men. They pay for the dates, and even if they did, that's really on them. If I don't, if I'm, we not, we just. This is a first date. We're going Dutch. I don't care what anybody says, and we're just going to get a coffee. I'm you not like that. I'm not. Yes, you I'm, do it Dutch on the first date. The first date, we're going to get coffee. What if she? What if you ask her out? You still going? You going to be like, can you pay for half of it? But you know what? Because it's coffee, I'll pay for the coffee. I have no problem paying for. The, you know what? Now that I think about it, I'll pay for the coffee, right? Because most, like, when I, when I was, because I haven't been dated in, like, over a year, but, like, when I used to, especially back in college, I would just go get, we would just go for a coffee. And it would just be understood that, like, oh, you get your coffee, I'll get my coffee. But then when we go to a restaurant, if I'm dating you long enough, I'll pay for it. But a lot of times when I, when I was in a relationship in college, when we went to Olive Garden, um, I offered to pay for it. And she was like, I'm good. Let's go Dutch. 
So I offer to pay for it. But a lot of times they want to pay for their own food, and I don't see a problem with that. But my opinion is first date, you really should be going Dutch because I don't – I'm not going to just go on Even constantly if you going – ask her out, I disagree. I disagree. I'm not going to constantly go on first out, dates and pay for everything. I'm not doing that. You ask them out. It was your idea. Well, I'm Why a, wouldn't I'm you a, pay for I'm it? Ask us, I'm going to ask to go for some coffee. I'm not going to take you to some shit that's hundred over $100. So if they get mad and they don't want to go Dutch with you, what you going to say? Uh, I'm going to let them know. Gonna before, I'm going to let them know <laughs> beforehand. Gonna I'm going to let them know beforehand we go in Dutch so we can handle it right there. We're not going to get to the check table. And you don't know. You going to ask you going to say that when you ask them out? Or are you going to wait for them to enjoy the entire date? I'm going to say that I'm going to say that when I ask her out. That's your game? That's like that's like that's your style? That's my game and style cuz that I mean how I don't say how is that not, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, know. <laughs> I don't know how that's not I don't know how that's not how that's bad game by like, all right, I'm going go to go on a coffee date. I'm going to go on a coffee date to see if I even like you. I'm not going to take you to Laurie's on the first date. And it's I just a, it's, about a that. It's, it's a bunk. It's a I dead. didn't say nothing about the quality of the day or how much you spend on the check. I didn't say nothing about that. I'm just talking about the fundamentals. Laurie's, you have to have been my girlfriend for over you, a year you, or two. Why are you bringing then up Laurie's? You. you don't have to be bringing up no Laurie's. I didn't say that. Let's see. Let's stick with the coffee or just an ordinary dinner date. You but see, now that I think about it, because it's just a coffee, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a offer to pay for it. If she, so it's the if price it's, point? It's really the price point because I'm not going to commit financially. I'm not going to commit a, a large amount of resources. To take you on a fancy date and it's a dud. Then I get on. Then the next though. week this I get on Tinder though. for another worthless day. The next week I get on Tinder for another worthless day. So I'm. I gotta spend thing. 10k before I get a, a girlfriend who's decent. I'm not Didn't doing nobody that. Nobody say that. Didn't nobody say that. You keep putting all this uh these expenses. But, on but you un, you thing, understand though. what I mean by 10k, right? No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. Because because every about week you go on a different date. So that's why I don't have a problem with what she's doing. And I don't even really. I'm not even really thinking about the money aspect. I'm thinking. Yes, she's, you are. You keep bringing up the money. She's speed dating. Right, so if it works for her, it works for her. But like, I'm not gonna. If I want a speed date, I gotta pay a hundred speed date. I got twenty four hours. Let me understand. Okay, I think going on two dates in twenty four hours is like soft speed dating. I think that's a lot of da- that's a lot of that's a lot of dating. You going on? Let's say she does that. That's one in two days. Friday and Saturday, she does that. Where she exactly. go on a that's date in the after, and she go on a date in the early afternoon when she goes off work, and then late in the evening she'll go on another date, and then she does it on Saturday. She goes on four dates a week, right? And let's say she's not paying for them, but I'm not even thinking about that. She's she's actively searching her options. So me as a man, since I'm expected to pay, I'm doing coffee dates. I'm not spending. I'm not taking a girl to axe throwing four times a week. And spending hundred fifty dollars every time I do it, I'm not doing that. That's just, fine. That's fine. I'm just not. All I was asking. All but I was I'll go, asking. I go. I take her to coffee. I, we go to the park. I might even. I might even make a little picnic. That's you. Make, okay. That's you. So you good. You good. That's all cool I was with me. Asking is all I was asking is if you ask them out on the first date and you come up with the idea for y'all to go to da 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 da. You expect the woman to pay for half when you asked her out on the date that you came up with. Listen. Because because I'm not taking her nowhere fancy in the first date, I'm an offer. But a lot of times I've seen in my own life, they're like, "No, I got my own money. I'm good." You don't understand how many times I've seen that. So I just think it's an interesting I'm, premise. And, and I just think it's my an mind, premise. in my mind, I'm already expecting to go Dutch. And I don't, I don't only hold the man to that standard either. I think that if the woman were to ask me out and she was like, "I want to take you here," I would expect for her to want to pay for it. Now, if she doesn't want to pay for it and she expects me to pay for it, I don't have a problem just taking out the checkbook and just, here, here's the card. What's the day going to be? You going yeah. on a first date. But the we, first ain't going, not we, ain't going nowhere, we ain't going nowhere fancy, though. So yeah, I, that's no why I don't. I, so no maybe one's doing I meant, that on the first date anyway. I, I, I definitely misspoke. That's what I meant. Let me, let me correct what I was saying. Because we ain't going nowhere fancy, I have no, I have no, I don't care. I'm, we're going to, we're going to, we might even go to like a little fancier coffee shop. We might go to one of those real bougie coffee shops. I'll pay because it's, it's coffee. You're shit. not gonna spend more than twenty bucks on coffee. That's, but that's what I'm saying. I don't have a problem with that. But I'm not taking you to Applebee's. I'm not taking you to the Olive Garden. To I'm Applebee's. Not, I'm not taking. This is my, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> so Nick, you go on two to three dates a week. <laughs> yeah. Right. You go on two to three okay. dates. Applebee's, but you spending two hundred bucks. By choice. You spending By choice. You spending two hundred bucks a week. By choice. Just to test your options. Just to By play choice, around on yes. Twitter. I'm not doing that. Yes. I'm okay with spending maybe even $50 a week to do that. 
I'm okay. I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. That's the amount I just of think investment. It's interesting. You're not the only that, guy that thinks and, that and, either. And it will escalate every day. I might spend like 20 more bucks, and then it'll it'll reach a capping point. It'll reach a top point. It, like probably like 100. If I'm like me and her are really dating, and she wants to go out every week, I will spend 100. That's a that's a pretty solid dinner at like a three star restaurant every week. Maybe even maybe a four star. The depending on how you stretch maybe it. the difference in mentality is just the amount of money. Because I really because if I'm inviting them to some place, it's because I can afford that place. So you taking them on coffee because you know you can afford to go. But I rather put that. I rather in four hundred bucks a month. I rather invest that. I, I, I want to no invest that in people I'm not just trying to get no four hundred. Just having I'm a food, about a free first food, date. Donor, free food, speed down their phone. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to coffee. I'm gonna fill you out. If I'm not feeling it. I'm on to the next one. That's good. I'm just talking about first date is first date, though. First date is first date. If you're inviting them on the first date and you say we should go to this place, you should be and with the understanding, you should come with the understanding that you're going to pay for it because you asked them out on the date. Same reason why if they ask you out on the date and they say, I want to take you to some, even if it is just a coffee date or if it's some luxurious shit, you're going to turn up and they, they're going to expect you to pay for the, the $100 meal, the $300 meal. I wasn't expecting to do that because you asked me on the date. But if you want me to, maybe that's just me, though. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. I, I, I'm willing to pay. I'm willing it to pay. It just depends. Because, like, listen, my mentality is I find a really significant other, a significant other that I genuinely love. Like, it's really deep. I want to I shower you with love and treat you, you know. So I'll pay for it. I want to take you really cool spots that you would enjoy. Niggas but stingy. Ju- but just for some random, <laughs> some Niggas random. Niggas stingy. What is, so how what was stingy about what I just said? Niggas is stingy because niggas think that because it's the first date and you don't know the person, even though you chose to ask the person out, you chose to it's take re- to that it place. really is just like a first it's you like, chose it's like a first what? meeting. It's like it's like you I know, but let me finish my sentence. Let me finish my sentence. Cause you chose everything. As the as the person who's asking them bro, out, bro, it's you chose audition. everything. It's literally we are both auditioning. You asked them to audition to see if this relationship will work. You ask them to audit, and it, who's talking about a relationship on a first date? That's what I'm talking about. So I think it's we, just, I think hold it's just on, a difference hold on, in mentality. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so you mentality. don't date to interview potential relationship partners? Because you do, you do date sometimes in order to interview Especially at relationship our age, partners. People are dating to get married, but sometimes you just going out. People on are a not date. dating just for like a one year fling. People are dating for to get married. I'm not going. I'm not wasting just, my time. Like you said, it's an interview. It is an interview. But we we I think we hold in it a little too long. We I think we hold in it a little too long. But ultimately, I don't think she did anything wrong. If that's if she's she's exploring her options. Yeah, she's not using right? these men. And I, she I might and they might be and they're just they're thinking that they're paying for it. And you know what? The men might actually be paying for it. That's their game. They're like they're on your mindset where it's like I'm a date and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna spend some. I'm gonna I'm gonna put up the bucks. But me, I'm gonna go on a coffee <laughs> date and then we're gonna do a picnic. And then, How it, much is and, then and then wait, then wait, then wait. It, 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 I looked it up earlier. It was like thirty dollars for an hour. That's not bad. That ain't shit. No, that ain't shit. That ain't shit. But you're doing that two, three times a week by choice. That's so what let's I let's add it up. What's choice. It? What's 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 you're doing this by so choice? Sixty times. What is it? Fifty two weeks in a year. <laughs> I don't get it. That's like that's like you blaming that's 3, the alcohol 1, for that's your That's three thousand one hundred and twenty. Three thousand one hundred and twenty. Um. Dollars for an entire year of doing that, and let's add, nigga, and let's add another fifteen hundred for drinks. Probably that's nigga, probably you correct. Are, you were maybe more doing it though. So you had four thousand six hundred and twenty dollars a year, fucking around when that money could have went into some crypto that skyrocketed to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Do you not? Do you not see what I'm saying though? The I'm reason not, why I'm, I'm this, good. The point of view is stupid because you're you're willingly choosing to go on the, that, that many dates. If you don't have the money to go on that many dates in a month, then limit the amount of dates you go out on. That's the way. That's the re- like. If you can't go, but I'm talking from a speed dating time. mindset. I'm talking about like you really just want to go out there and date. I don't. I'm not doing that. I'm not being a free food nigga three times a week. I'm not doing that. Like, I mean, I guess I'll I, get a I, coffee. I, that doesn't. That's nothing. That's like, I didn't oh, think we I'll were gonna disagree on it. I didn't think we were gonna disagree on it. But we we found an angle. We found an angle. Because <laughs> I'm I'm not sorry. Like I, we're gonna go on a coffee date, and I've been on them before. And the funny thing is about this coffee day I'm thinking about, we had already, we were already like friends of benefits for like over a year, but we had stopped talking and she's like, oh, let's catch up. Let's go get some coffee. And it just put this idea in my mind. that was like, that's probably how you should handle these first dates. Even though that wasn't a first date, 
But we had actually know what it was because we had never actually went on an actual date. We had just been fooling around when we had like met it. We had like met at a party and then you know i'm not gonna get too deep into that but like that's why i went on a coffee i went on a coffee date but here's the thing she asked me on a coffee date i asked try to ask her on dates before and she was like nah we're just gonna keep it in the sheets we're gonna keep it at night and then she asked me on a coffee date like i had for me not having talked to her in like in months over almost a year so but i when i went it was so casual and chill i was like this is how you should do first dates like Y'all just getting to know That's each other. That's why women like, be having a problem with men these days, bro. Because we don't want to do shit. We we coming up with ideas and we expect bro, everything I'm not like, gonna, in return. I'm not going to take you to some fancy shit and I don't know you. We can No, go I feel you on that. I feel you on that. And I'm you not know talking what? about that, though. I'm not talking about that. Because I don't think Applebee's is fancy. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. you know what? But they it, say that the average date is $100 nowadays. It's stop. actually a little over $100. That's why I'm doing coffee date or a picnic. But, but you know what? And you can take her somewhere really nice. But you know what? If you really... And here's, here's another crazy thing. If y'all <laughs> hit it, I said, I'm not taking it if, if, Or I don't even like it's probably gonna be it's probably <laughs> literally gonna be like coffee date, picnic, movie, or maybe switch those around. So coffee date, movie, picnic. Then I'm gonna take you to Olive Garden. You know, then maybe by then, you know, we, we dating or like, you know, you come to my house and we just chilling. Spend a hundred dollars. Oh my god. Then two people. You know, like, how much months, could it really months be? gone by. Then I'll take you to Macaroni Grill. Then I'll take you to. You know, Korean BBQ or, you know. Like, why were these niggas talking about he, she was using them when they probably asked her out on the date? Yeah. That's crazy. But That's here's the crazy. Thing. If you, if you check her on a coffee date weird. and y'all really hit it off, you could just say, hey, you've been there for two hours just cracking up. She'd give me your if eyes. You find out she went you on another say, coffee hey, date. You trying to go for dinner? Hey, you want to go to movies? I don't see what a problem with that. If you found out she went on another coffee date with another nigga the next day, you talking about she used you? No. Because we, we, this is just intro. We're not dating. We just. So at least we agree on that. We're two point. people who are, at this point, acquaintances who are meeting up, wondering if it could possibly be more. At we're not, we we're not in a relationship, though. So I don't care. I could do the same thing tomorrow. I, don't, I would expect her to not be mad at me. What's up with these weird niggas that are talking about her using them? Because they, I, I said earlier, they think, that, they think that these dudes are paying for it. And she's not serious. She's just going to get free drinks and free experiences and fun with no commitment. But like, which is what a first date is. It's a first date. That's what, that's really what it is. So I don't see a problem with that. It'd be different. It was like, she had been, she's with this dude. She had been dating him exclusively. And even then it's fine. That's what I'm saying. Like until there's an exclusivity that's agreed upon, I don't see a problem there. Yeah. But people are going to get jealous. I mean, imagine she was sleeping. Niggas is weird imagine she nowadays, was she had been dog. on ten dates with one guy. They weren't exclusive. They were sleeping together, and then she started going on a whole bunch of dates with other men. You would feel some type of way, but she isn't in the wrong because yeah, y'all are not weird. Y'all are not together. Together, but we be out. But we be that out there trying to chase all types of pussy, <laughs> and don't don't even bat an eye to that. We be out there doing the most craziness. But I don't know, not What's me, man. Me niggas? personally, if I'm dating somebody and we on a couple of dates, I'm kind of focused on you. Even though we're not together yet. Yeah, I mean... But that's me. I'm like that that's, too. That's, not, that's on a person-to-person basis. And if you're not doing that, that's not really... It's not, they're not in the wrong for that. I don't like that too. Like, I don't, I don't really be having a heavy rotation of women like that. Never. I'm mostly... I've I'm always been, date like I've always been singularly focused. I meet somebody. We hit it off. We start, you know, we go on a couple of dates. We might even start sleeping together. I'm kind of singularly focused on that. Like, I like you. I'm not too deep. You know, into it, but I really like you, and I would be open to more. That's how I've always been, especially when I was in college. I never, I've never in my life, and dudes are probably like this dude's a simp. This dude's a this dude ain't because they they because I think Andrew, the Andrew Tate thing. and Alpha Male Strategies and these Manosphere dudes, they think you're not a man unless you have a steady rotation, like a harem of like five women. You just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they all rotating through. I think it's just an energy sex thing. Chambers. I think like, I don't. I think that some. I think the dudes that are like yourself. And I'm like that too sometimes. Who would wi- are more willing to just spend all, all their focus into one woman and just try to get that? But I'm not a simp ground. though. I'm not gonna get on my knees and let no you abuse me. A simp. No, but no I'm just I'm just clarifying. I'm just clarifying because of these like weirdo cucks on the internet. They'll just take it. So does that mean that you get on your knees and worship her? I'm like, no. I just don't have the energy to be. Running after and playing Dude, games. You don't have and to respond to the ignorant shit. That's, I'm just that's saying. Ignorant I'm, shit. That's ignorant shit. I'm just like, if I'm dating, right? I have no. Listen, if it's just first dates, like first date didn't work out, next one. First date didn't work out, 
Next one. But you've been on three or four dates with someone, and you might have went on a couple of dates on the side, and then y'all start sleeping together, and y'all got a little thing going, not necessarily committed. I'm kind of focused on you. I'm not seeking seeking more. I, I got somebody I'm trying to see what's just, going, just so you going know, on with. I'm not with. a simp, though. I'm not a simp, though. And we got to stop and, throwing and that can, word around. And we got to stop throwing that word around. throwing it around. It's just these weirdos, and these, like, teenagers on the internet, like, they get on. They get on my nerves after a while. Like you just see it, whatever, nigga. It's not just teenagers. You just see either. it. You just see it, whatever, nigga. You just see it, and after one hundred times of like somebody saying some crazy shit about you, about you being a simp, then it's like, all right, bro, I gotta clarify it. I don't respond. But to you're the giving face. them what they want, basically. Exactly. Like exactly. this uh, YouTuber. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, I am Dante. Or I am Dante. He was. He got shouted out on an XXX song. He was talking about how there was this dude who just messaged him every day for like five years about how you're, you're a bitch, I hate you, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then the instant he was like, bro, like, you've been doing this for five years. Can you stop? He was like, oh, my God, I'm a big fan. I never thought you would respond. <sighs> so you never know what the troll's motives really are. They just yeah, want, they just they, want they, attention. And they're not, they not doing nothing personally. They're not doing Five years, bro? Five years of texting this man every single day? Well, because the dudes that are calling you a simp, probably ain't, they probably sipping themselves. Exactly. It's all just projection. It's all just projection. That's why I don't want you to even respond to it. Because that's just projection. It's all just projection. But I don't see what the problem is. It's like, you got a good thing going. I'm going to focus on you. I'm not going to be obsessed. I'm not going to be just like, what you doing today? I might not even hear you from you for a couple of, a day or two. I don't know what you're doing. And we're not in a relationship. So you could be saying other, other guys. I don't really care. It's only when we, we decide to be exclusive. Then it's going to be like, and I'm still going to trust you, but I wouldn't get in a relationship. I didn't trust you. So it's really, a lot of times it's really up to the guy's judgment. And a lot of dudes just pick people who are untrustworthy. And you can say the same, same thing when women pick men who are untrustworthy. They're, the signs are there. That's why I don't want to get put too many resources into a first date. I got to fill you out. If I really like you on the spot, you feeling me, and we went to get coffee, I'm going to say, hey, you trying to go Axtron? It's right up the street. Like, you get what I mean? Yeah, I'm not putting resources if I don't. I'm, we're not gonna meet up at the Axe Throne. We're gonna meet up at the coffee shop. If we really like you and you like me, and I propose a second place, we're probably gonna do it. All right. Yeah, let's keep let's keep it moving. I want to talk about this uh, this uh, this New York judge who got fired from his job because he had an OnlyFans. So we we just gonna fire people now because they have OnlyFans? Well, I mean, you work at a firm and you're doing things outside of work that they deem that breaks their policy or they deem obscene. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the language. Since when is the it language in the contract. Probably the contract? Since when is it in the contract that you can't have a side hustle? I don't know. I, I can't think of it. I any, didn't know that was a I thing. I didn't know that was a thing. They probably just think it's bad bad PR for their image, and they was just like, we're going we're gonna to let you go. He might have a real case to sue. Maybe he could sue. He could for wrong for termination. What are all these women that have OnlyFans doing, dude? They don't have jobs? I've heard stories of, of women... With OnlyFans getting fired from their jobs pretty regularly. I see a decent amount. I didn't know that was a thing. But, uh, yeah, man. I, I just, thought we had more for this. I thought we had more for this. We don't have no jokes? I don't have a joke, man, because it's just like, my dude, like, we can't really... Con- serious it out. We can't <laughs> really... serious it out. We can't really <laughs> control what they do. I think, personally, I think that's wrong. But, I mean, it's different if... It would be kind of different if you're a school teacher. And your classmates are just passing around your OnlyFans news that they got on. They got leaked on Reddit. You know what I'm trying to. You get what I'm trying to say. Like that would be in a situation. It's a side where the school, hustle, bro. It's the no school different. would like, fire you. Like, but why are we uh, why are we allowed to thirst trap on Instagram, but we can't have OnlyFans? Because OnlyFans is typically porn and like nude content. Nude and pics. what's Instagram? Uh, <laughs> what's, softcore, what's Instagram? Softcore porn that you'll get deleted if you show too much nipple. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I thought we had more for this. We don't have more. Nah. Let's move on. Let's move on. What you got? That's it, man. That's that I have. No, you got that Grimes shit. You got the Grimes shit. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. So the Grimes. Can talk about that? Yeah. It's a, this is, no, these are the quick ones, but this is a Grimes topic where Grimes renamed her, her child that she had with uh, Elon Musk. Uh, not they have two children. I think they have two children, but they renamed their child. Um, I think it's their first child. Why? Just question mark. But because the government won't allow them to put question mark, it's just what the letter Y. Someone needs to take her. What is what is to, she smoking? Because I want it. She's on something. 
What? Because what was the first? Like, what was no the first here. name? Like X A E. It was like X A E dash dash. Like some Android <laughs> Elon Musk like brain chip robot baby. Like people were saying, like, how do you even pronounce these names, bro? Like, what are they calling this baby? I need to know, like, what they call these ch- these children. I'm just surprised with how like I'm just surprised Elon just doesn't care. I'm just surprised. Like, I'm surprised because he- he's a weirdo too. If you're dating Grimes, you're a weirdo too. Yeah. You hear me? Nah. Yeah, he could just like her. I, I mean, I think Elon Musk is a weirdo. Personally, he could just like her. <laughs> but he, I don't, I, I don't think that's necessarily true. You could just, you could not be weird yourself and just like weird girls. Okay, yeah. wrong with that? I didn't but say anything was wrong with it. I'm just talking not, about the day. She's not naming my son. Why? You can call him if you want that to be his nickname, and it's not too ridiculous. I'm okay with that. But that's not going to be his government name. I'm gonna shut yeah. that down. Yeah, I think he likes it. I think he wants the name. That's, I think that's, you're not gonna that's name my you're not gonna name my son Alien Code. You're not gonna name my son a, a string in a coding language. We're not doing that. So I think he's down for that name change. That's what I would say. I mean, he clearly is down for it. We don't know. Maybe behind the scenes, he was like, "I just saw the article. What are you doing?" Because <laughs> he's so busy running companies, he just doesn't care. I don't know. But you know, moving I'm, on. Moving on. Let's go into deep cuts. Okay, okay. All right. Well, sadly, this is going to be our last episode ever. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, we won't be able to catch you same place, same time next week for another episode of the Top Tier Podcast. Yeah, we're getting banished to the Shadow Room and uh, <laughs> we'll be falling in a dimension with clocks. Just Check the date, endlessly. y'all. Check the date. All right. <laughs> Let's get out of here. All right, y'all. Take it easy. <laughs>